welcome back to the Jessica Ruth Knits Podcast. I am Jessica, your host, and welcome back to anybody that is a returning viewer. If you are a new viewer, welcome as well. I'm so glad you are joining us in our little space in the YouTube world. Today is June 8th, I believe. It's Monday. Um, this is episode 38. So welcome. I am so glad you are all here and watching. And this is a knitting podcast. Um, I also crochet and spin, but I haven't picked up a hook or touched my spinning wheel in a long time. So it, it's going to be all knitting today. Now, I do have Mabel here with me. She is seven and a half months. Um, she's our foster baby. So if you hear her talking, talking, um, she's just right here playing with her toys on the floor. And then Thatcher, my two-year-old, is napping. So I'm going to try to get this done before he wakes up. But if he, um, if he makes an appearance, he can join us on the podcast as well. I apologize for any sniffling. It has been crazy windy here, and so my allergies are just um, off the charts. They are going crazy. So I've been taking allergy pills, but I'm still awfully sniffly. So I do apologize for that. But if I waited to record till my allergies were gone, I would never ever get the podcast out. So um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to start off by showing you my finished objects, and I have three, well four if you count a pair of socks as two. But my first finished object is the Jelly Roll, is that better? I don't see it. The Jelly Roll Littles Edition sweater. Now, oh, I'm missing it, I'm sorry. I followed the pattern for the 6 to 12 month size and this fits my two year old who wears 4T. So I don't know what happened. Um, I went down a couple needle sizes because my gauge is always looser than the pattern calls for. So generally I just size down a needle size and my gauge is fine. But I don't know what happened with this one, so it fits Thatcher absolutely perfectly. Um, so I guess Mabel is just going to have to wear it in a couple years when she fits it. But I do love it. Like, oh, that color work is so fun. It was so fun to knit. Um, there was a couple different new techniques that I'd never used. So the pattern is the Jelly Rolls Little Littles. She has Jelly Rolls sweater for adults, Jelly Rolls Littles for kids, and then she has the Jelly Rolls socks. And it's by Mara Catherine Briner. Briner? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how you say it. I forget what, she has a design name and I forget what it is. But um, it's super cute. It's supposed to be long sleeve and then there's more color work on the ends, the cuffs. But since I wasn't sure when this would fit Mabel, um, I didn't want to make the sleeves too long or too short. So I thought just short sleeves and it'll fit her whenever the body fits. So if you guys watched last week's episode, you know I was really debating about what to do for the sleeves. So I just want short sleeves and I think it worked out perfectly. But yeah. So there's the front, there's some short rows in the back. Um, so this is the back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And otherwise, uh, yeah. I really like it. I don't like the fit. Um, I'm not a fan of the rolled neck, but whatever. It's for the kids. So we'll see. But um, it was super fun to knit. A super quick knit. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that will fit Mabel in a year or two. Okay. Oh. I'm so sorry. My next finished object is something I am super excited about. This is my Susurus, Susurus, it's S-U-S-U-R-R-U-S -S -S sweater by Hohi Locatelli. It's from the Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. I believe it's the most recent one. Um, I ordered the magazine just for this sweater because the pattern 
was not available. You couldn't purchase just the sweater pattern anywhere. So I purchased the whole, the pom-pom, the magazine, even though there's nothing else really in it that I like. But guys, I finished it and I absolutely love it. So I'll show it to you. Um, last week, where was I? Oh, last episode, I was here. So I did all of that in the meantime. And I have blocked it, so it is it grew quite a bit um, once the lace really opened up. But yeah, so if you haven't seen previous episodes, I am use, I'm trying to use up a lot of yarn from my stash because I have all of this gorgeous yarn behind me. Um, plus I have a ton underneath my bed that either didn't look pretty on the wall or it's like already caked up so it wouldn't fit very well. But I have all of this gorgeous yarn and so I really wanted to start using it. However, that means I don't know. I don't really have many sweater quantities of yarn. Um, so for this one, it called for three colors. It called for this color, which is held together with the mohair. It called for the mohair and it called for a third color for the lace. So what I did is I alternated. I found two red skeins. Um, this one has more lighter colors and pinkies. And this one, the second one is a more maroon color. You can see there the contrast. And I just alternated the stripes. I was afraid if I started knitting with one color, I didn't know how far I would get. Um, and then I didn't want the sweater to look choppy, like have the top half be, you know, the mohair alternating with one color and the bottom, the mohair alternating with a second color if I ran out. So I just, I started alternating them from the beginning. Um, I made it short sleeves because I make pretty much all of my sweaters short sleeves. Uh, excuse me. Ugh. I don't really know why you need a third color for all of the cuffs and the collar. Um, I think it would have been just fine to do the collar in one of the reds. Um, the collar is this gray color and it's held together with mohair which makes it kind of itchy. So in hindsight, I should have just done it a red, not with mohair, and then started with the mohair. But it is what it is, and um, I mean it looks fine. I just think if you were trying to be conscious of your yarn, I had plenty of both reds left over, so there was no need for a third, to open it a third skein. Uh, it just was unnecessary in my book. But yeah, so it's like that. And I just did maybe an inch or so for the bottom. But this is like the most light and airy sweater. Like you can see how see-through it is. But it's just, it's going to be perfect for summer. Um, it's so cozy, like you just want to snuggle it. Thatcher comes up to it and he grabs the sweater and he just rubs it on his face. And he says, so soft, so soft. Um, which I think is absolutely adorable. The gray, oh. I don't know where my eye is. It's just, um, it's Rowan Kid Silk Haze. Where is it? I don't read this. Is it? Maybe. It's Rowan Kid Silk Haze, which is the mohair I used in this sweater. And I fell in love with it. Now, this sweater that I'm wearing is the No Frills sweater by, I want to say Petite Knits. Um, but it's fingering and mohair held together. And I've shown this before, but I faded it. I don't know if you can see. I faded it, so I used one skein, I used three skeins of fingering weight, and then I held them together with the gray mohair throughout. And I just absolutely fell in love with this mohair. It's mohair and it's kid silk, and so it's so soft and lofty and airy, and it's just to die for. So, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, are you going to be on the podcast? Yeah. Um, so I had, I think a skein or two left over from this sweater. And so I bought, I had for, for the Seussers, I had a total of four balls of the mohair. However, I still have one and like 90% of a second one. So 
I really didn't need four skates or four balls of it. But I didn't want to run out. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely, I love it. I couldn't wait to block it, so I blocked it right away. Now, normally, after I block, like, I'll block some, or I'll get something wet, you know, with the wool wash. And then normally I pin it out on, we have a spare bed. Um, and so I'll pin it out. I wasn't going to do that with this one. I was too much in a hurry. And it's been, like, 90 degrees outside. So I just washed it, and then I hung it on our clothesline. So I hung it, I folded it over the clothesline right here at the armpits. That way the sweater, the body part, would have the most weight to it, and so it would kind of pull everything down and open up that lace weight. And then once it was probably like 75% dry, I went out and I switched it and I hung it like this. So that way the top portion could have the weight to it and open the top up. Um, and I think it worked just fine. I mean, the lace, let's see if I do it like this, is pretty open after blocking. I don't know how you're gonna, but maybe, maybe see it good like that. Um, but I was not gonna sit and pin out this entire sweater on our bed when I could just use the sun to dry it outside. So if it was a shawl, or like a triangular shape something um, I probably would have because you want to keep that shape but with the sweater I just used the natural weight of the sweater to uh, block itself pretty much so that's my scissors I love it I can't wait to put it on and wear it but I wanted I didn't want to wear it on the podcast because I wanted to be able to show you guys um, how far I got since last podcast so that is my second finished object for I don't know, it's been two, three weeks now. <clears throat> okay, third one. And I'm just drinking iced coffee. Tim and I are doing the keto diet again. I did it before I got pregnant with Thatcher, so like two years ago. And I lost 50, 60 pounds on it, and then I got pregnant. Um, and I gained the weight, and then postpartum I gained all my weight back. So now things have kind of, well, I'll talk about this in the end, but anyways, we're doing the keto diet. So this is just plain coffee. I brew a whole pot in the morning and whatever I don't drink, I pour into a mason jar and put it in the fridge. So it's just black coffee. It's heavy whipping cream, a bunch of ice cubes and a little bit of sugar-free hazelnut syrup just to give it a little something, something. So that's what I'm drinking today. Because again, it's super warm outside and it's windy, but it's super warm. Okay, so my next finished object is a cheater object because I have been really going through our house lately and purging and organizing and I found all of these whips that, I don't know, for some reason I put down and never got back to them. And... I found these socks that I have been working on and I wanted to try so normally when I do socks I just do toe up I do the fish lips kiss heel um maybe we'll just roll it over so I'm waiting for her to hit the tripod haha <laughs> um so I just do toe up I do 64 stitches there she goes I do the fish lips kiss heel um and then I just keep going up until however tall I want them. So these socks that I'm going to show you, oh, excuse you. I wanted to try a true afterthought heel. Now I have done afterthought heels where you put the waist yarn in. And so basically you're knitting, I do toe up. So you start toe up and then where about you think you want the heel, you put in waist yarn and then you just keep knitting, um, which is a really good way to do it. If you're like on a road trip or going to the movies or something, and you don't have time to turn the whole heel, you can just put waist yarn in over half the stitches and you can keep going and make a tube. Um, however, one time I was, I don't know, overconfident in doing a afterthought heel with waist yarn and I put in the waist yarn at the wrong spot. So I forget if the heel ended up being like underneath my foot or way up past where it should be. But the sock did not fit at all I couldn't rip it, well, I probably could have fixed it, but it was like self-striping yarn, and so 
I thought if I tried to fix it, it would just ruin the pattern. <laughs> so I think I just threw those socks away. Um, and ever since then, I have been afraid to do an afterthought heel. So these are what's called a true afterthought heel. There's no waist yarn. You just do your toes and then you just knit, 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 knit until you put in the cuff. Oh, excuse me. Um, I have this gorgeous yarn. It's mustache yarn. The colorway is Calabasas. And this is the sock right there. So you just, I started the heel, I mean the toe. I did 64 stitches and then I just knit. And so I was doing them two at a time. Like this. I probably started these a year ago. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I'm so sorry. It's not attractive at all. Um, so when I found them in my project bag, I had, none of them had cuffs. One of them was like to here. The other one was all the way through the yellow. One of them had a heel. The other one did not. And I couldn't remember the pattern I used. I couldn't remember what method I had cut the heel in. And so for a while, I just put them back in their bag and didn't want to deal with them. And it doesn't help that I was doing the heel in a black yarn, which is not fun at all to knit with. Um, and so I just, I didn't want to work on them. I was over it. I had no desire to finish them, even though they were so close. All they needed was two cuffs and one heel. Like, I mean, really, it would take a day if I could just sit down and figure it out. So one night, I forget what Tim was doing, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit on the couch after the kids went to bed. I found the pattern that I had used. So the pattern I used is the Smooth Operator Socks um, by Susan B. Anderson. Now I didn't follow the pattern for the socks at all, I just followed her afterthought heel instructions. And she, in that pattern, she, I think it's free. Um, I'm not sure because it was in my Ravelry library, so I'm not sure if I purchased it or if it was a free one. But she gives you instructions for both using waist yarn and doing a true afterthought with no waist yarn. So I knew I hadn't put waist yarn in, um, so I ended up, I found that pattern that I had used and I thought I'm just going to sit down and put the heel in. And once I put the heels in, it was nothing to put the little cuffs on. Um, and I have quite a bit of yarn left over. Oh, there's a, oh, there's two darning needles in there. Factor really likes to steal the little tubes with my darning needles in them because they shake and he can open them, but then I find darning needles everywhere. So anyways, these are my leftovers. Now, Mustache Yarns, she is a genius at doing stripes. She also, I don't know if all of her skeins are like this or if you have to buy certain ones that are skeined up this way, but they are the stripes are perfectly matched. So um, they, let me hold it up. They match perfectly like that, which is super fun. A lot of self-striping yarn doesn't. Um, so her skein is wound in two different hanks that perfectly match. So as long as you start them at the same place, you will have perfectly matched socks. So, um, I forget what it, I was going. Oh yeah, so I have quite a bit left over. Um, I'm gonna put it on my sock locker to show you how pretty it is. If I can get on, there we go. Get like this. Look how fun that is. Um, there. Yeah, there's quite a bit of yarn left over, so I might knit Mabel a pair of tube socks. Mabel is teeny tiny. Um. She's almost eight months and she's only 15 pounds. For reference, my girlfriend just had a baby. He's seven weeks old and he is 15 pounds. So my eight month old is the same size as her seven week old baby. Um, 
so she's a little peanut. Thatcher was huge. Um, yeah, so it's just interesting, the size difference. But I have plenty of yarn left over, so I might... I might either knit her tube socks or do... Oh, what I should do is the pattern Little Sock Arms. I think that's what it's called. Um, they have sock arms for adults, and I think it's Little Sock Arms for the kids. And it's a pattern that's designed... Oh, here comes Thatcher. Specifically for self-striping sock yarn to be used on the arms. <coughs> and then he's going to look for me. And then the body is, um, sorry, Mabel's kicking. The body is solid. So I have some gray. I could do gray and then do this for her arms. That would be super cute. But yeah. Thatcher, but I'm in Mabel's room. Come here. Come here. Look, Mama's talking to the iPad. Do you want to come say hi? Come. Come say hi? Come here. You're not wearing any clothes, so we're going to have to pause it. Come here. Do you want to show them your mama bear? Is she cooking? Here. <gasps> There's the iPad. Um, okay, I'm going to take him potty, and we're going to put some clothes on him, and we will be right back to show you what I'm working on next. Okay, see you in a bit. <gasps> Can you say hi? Are you gonna be shy? Say hi, friends. Hi, YouTube. Can you say YouTube? No. Who is that, baby Mabel? You wanna tell him about baby Mabel? Does she cry? Does she cry? Does she wear diapers? Do we change her? Or do we give her bottles? Mama is going to talk about knitting. Do you want to talk about knitting or do you want to go down and eat your pouch? You want to eat your pouch? Okay. Okay, go over there by Mabel. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, so those are all of my finished objects and now I have three different works in progress. Let me just put these socks out of the way and I will show you what I'm working on. Okay. I have been eyeing the sorrel sweater. It's either sorrel or sorrel. I think it's sorrel. Um, it's been out for a while. They just released a summer version of it. The original version is a high neck and it's long sleeve. And it's fingering held with... It's either lace or mohair. I think it's lace. Um, so I'm doing the original one. Of course I'm going to do it short sleeve. I don't like the summer version. It has like a wide neck and I don't like that neck on me. So I'm going to do the original one and just make it short sleeve. I, again, want to use stash yarn because this weekend I kind of ordered some yarn online. Um, I'll show that to you when it comes. Oh, sorry. But so I really wanted to be intentional about using stash yarn for this sweater before my new yarn comes and I get excited about that. So originally, I I have this lace yarn that it's just purple. It's misty alpaca lace, I believe. I'll find the um, the whole skein. But I purchased this yarn. I purchased three skeins of it years ago, maybe eight years ago now. Uh, yeah, it's this. Oh, it's Plymouth baby alpaca lace. The yarn shop that I purchased at, they closed six years ago maybe. And I didn't purchase it like at their going out of business sale or anything. <laughs> so it's at minimum six years old. And it's been in my stash. It is so soft. Um, I bought it because I was going to knit this lace shirt. <clears throat> and then I had no desire to knit a lace shirt. And then I didn't want to use it because I had three skeins of it. And so I thought it's a waste to use it, just one skein. Um, and I didn't really want to knit a purple lace shawl. So it's just, it's been sitting in my stash for forever. And so I thought this sweater pattern calls for lace. And th this is the perfect time to use it up. 
So I wound up one skein. I'm not sure, there's a ton of yardage in this. So I'm not sure how far one skein is gonna get me, especially being held together with fingering. So we'll see. Now, also in my stash, I had yarn from Knit Picks that I had bought on a D-stash on Ravelry. I don't know, a year or two ago. And, but don't feed her the pouch. Don't feed it to Mabel, she can't have it. Um, I think there's like seven or eight different skeins or balls, because it's Knit Picks, of yarn. Hey, can you, Butcher, can you wipe her mouth? Wipe, 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 thank you. And it's like a gradient of purple. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna move Mabel. Let's move her, okay, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, right there. Can you give her a toy? Does she have her wagon right there? So, there's like seven or eight balls of a gradient purple, and I thought how pretty that would be to hold together with this purple and have like a purple faded sweater. Uh, I really, for some reason, wanted a purple one. I think because I just knit a blue, I knit red, I have just knit a pink one, uh, so it's time for purple. I cast on and I hated it. I didn't even knit a row. I just did the cast on and hated it. It was looking so marled and because the the color I was going to use at the top was like this super light almost blush purple and this is such a dark purple lace it just looked super marled and I thought it's going to look less and less marled as we go down and the purple gets darker. I just thought it's gonna look the sweater this sweater deserves better so I ripped it out rewound this back up not that I had you know taken much off this because I had just cast on but um let me see if I printed out a picture to show you in case you don't know what the sweater looks like oh yeah okay so let's do this oh but don't don't hold on to the tripod are you trying to go around Mabel? Okay, good job. This is the sweater. How pretty is that? So I thought this deserves better than a marled, ugly combination of yarn. Um, also, the Knit Picks, the, it was the Knit Picks palette, which they have a ton of color choices. So if you're looking for color, that's a good option. If you're looking for softs, you know, close to the skin, that is not a good choice. It's not super wash wool, so it's like 100% Peruvian wool. Um, and it, it just feels like raw wool. And so that combined with the my dislike of the marling effect, um, I ripped it out and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. But look how gorgeous and stunning this sweater is. So I'm so much happier with my new choices. While I'm showing you the pattern, it is a paper pattern, so I'm not gonna show you uh, anything real but I'm gonna flash you the chart and tell you well, I guess I'll just like like this okay so it shows the chart on one side and the written directions here what I'm not too happy about on a whole different page is the key to the chart Let's go like this. so here's the key to the chart and the chart is on a different page which really frustrates me because I like to just be able to take one page of the pattern with me or like just put the page I'm working on in my project bag and unless you know, I mean this one, it's not, it's not like standard, I'm trying not to show you the whole thing, it's not standard, you know, like knit pearls cable, um, so I feel like what, I feel like as I'm knitting this I'm going to need to look at the key. Obviously until I get a couple of repeats done. You can take Mama Bear. So it's just kind of annoying that the chart's on a different page. Hi Mama Bear. Do you want to show the iPad your Mama Bear? Is that Mama Bear? Yeah. See there's Mama Bear, there's Pop Bear, and there's Baby Bear. Huh. Are those your favorite? Okay. Um, so Okay, that's my gripe with the pattern. But that aside, let me show you the yarn I picked up. Um, 
and I'll try to insert a picture that I used on Instagram because this one is already caked up and so the colors are going to be hard to see. I think I got mohair in my eye today. Okay, so it's going to be this whole together and then it goes to, so it's going to be this. Won't that be pretty? It's so moody and I don't know, I love it. You can see I got paint on my arm. But, um, yeah, so it'll be this lighter color. It looks super light now that it's caked up. But you can see in there, there's, like, dark colors. And then it'll go from this to this Bremen color, this guy. And then it'll go super dark. And this will be darkened up because it'll be held together with the lace. So it'll kind of tone it more dark. Hey, but you're going to fall. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. Now... This, this yarn is Primrose Fiber Company, and it was a sock set, so it came with a contrasting mini, and I decided to use that contrasting mini for the collar. I don't know why I have a thing for different colored collars right now, but I do. Um, so I cast on, and it's green. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Okay. So I cast on and I'm doing the ribbing for the collar and I'm about to switch to this one held with the purple lace. But I think that'll be such a fun pop of color. Now I'm not sure if when I get to the sleeves, if I will do them the contrasting color as well or if that will draw too much attention right here. I like the idea of drawing the attention up because as I am a bigger lady and I have ample area in my chest, I thought it would kind of draw your attention up to the fun stitches up here and up to my neck instead of kind of my chest region. So I'm not sure if I'll do the contrasting color here since it is such a bright pop of green, um, but I might. And then I'm not gonna do, I won't have enough and I don't want to do the green at the bottom. So this is all I have, um, which this will be plenty for the sleeves if I choose to do the cuffs in the green but it won't be enough to do a waistband in that green and I won't want to because by the time I get to the waist it's going to be that really dark purple and I think it'll just it'll be subtle enough to do the waist ribbing in that same color so um that's the yarn Dr. did we wind the yarn this morning yeah right there wind 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 Dr. loves winding yarn uh-oh. Did you drop her? Um, so I just cast on that on this morning. I got to knit a little bit on it during nap time. And then Mabel woke up. So I didn't get very far. Okay, I have one more work in progress. And then one that I haven't touched, but I thought I would show you. Because I want to work on it this week as well. Okay. Hey, bud, can you grab Mama's knitting bag out of the basket? Can you grab the blue one? No, the other one. That one. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Bad. It's so it's in this bag, which I think is super cute. There is a tag. It's from... The, oh, it's the Fat Squirrel. Okay. And in here, we have some socks for Daddy. So I have this pair of socks that I started. Um, again, these were in my whip pile. They were probably... I probably put an inch on them since I picked them up. And I had just done the toe and like an inch or two of this um, almost like rusted tin metal color. So um, I'm doing 68 stitches for Tim. He has narrow feet, but he has huge feet. And so he wears a size men's 13. So I'm doing 68 and then I'll put the heel in. I'll try it on him and put the heel in. Uh, but I went ahead and did, once I freed up my needles, from the mustache yarn socks. I went ahead and did the other toe. Okay, are you trying to climb up? Okay, I can up. Can you sit like, okay. Okay, you're gonna sit like that. So now I have one toe and one quarter of a sock. Um, I'm debating if I want to start drawing from the center of the ball of this gray color. And if I want to catch this up to the same point and then I can do them two at a time. 
or if I just want to work on this one. Um, I'm not sure. But we'll see. I have time to decide. These were just, I'd finished my sweater, I'd finished my mustache socks, and I needed something to work on without having to pick a new project. So I picked these up. So I'm not really in a hurry to get these done at all. Um, but they're more just like, if I need some simple knitting, or maybe I'll keep them in the car. Um, because now I'm super excited about my sweater. So, those are those. Hey, can you hop off for a second? Huh? Let mama look. I'm gonna see. Do you think I put the label in the sock yarn? <gasps> I did. Okay, so the gray is Nitty and Color. Nitty and color. The color is burned at both ends and it's a 7520. So, like that. So, that is the gray. Um, let's see if we have the orange. No, I don't know what the orange is. But it's just that. Like that. So, yeah. So, that is my other work in progress. And finally, can you grab the other bag? Can you get the pink bag out for mama? Anyway, you got that one. Can you get it out? Can you? Yep. Perfect. Thanks, Bug. So, in this project bag, this one is by <clears throat> Otterly Adorable Knits. And I love that it has a window. And it has lemons. And obviously you can't see. But right outside this window here. So we're in Mabel's room right now. Right outside this window here, we have a huge lemon tree. It doesn't, it has like hundreds of lemons on it, but they're itty bitty. It's not Meyer lemons, so they're not the huge ones. They're just kind of like one and done. Are you going to unzip it for mama? But um, we have a really fun lemon tree here. And all the little chickadees like to hang out in the lemon tree. And so when we open up Mabel's windows, it is just so fun because you hear all the birds. You can watch them in the lemon tree. We have bird feeders hung up out there. There's Thatcher's little garden. Um... So I love lemons and my lemon tree. Are you turning around, Mabel? Okay, can we get it out and show them? No. Okay, let's show them. This is my Downton Abbey um, scarf. And I have a... Um, I'm trying to think of the name. It'll come to me. It's a huge mini skein set. Um, darn it. Why can't I think of the name right now? Anyways, I've shown this on the podcast before. <clears throat> I'm not following a pattern. I'm basing it off a pattern I saw in Ravelry. Um, and I didn't want to pay for it because I thought I could just do it on my own. So I just cast on here. And I'm just using the mini skein set as she had it. Um, oh, I can picture the label. As she had it in the set. So I went all the way to the... This, it was divided in two. The mini skein sets were packaged in two. So this was the first half of the set. <clears throat> this gray is called Mr. Mason. And these were all individually labeled with people from Downton Abbey. I don't know. I just took all the tags off. Um, so I went all the way to the green. Now I'm doing probably a foot of just the Mr. Ma Are you coming up again? So I'll do like a foot of the Mr. Mason and then I'll start the second wave of the mini skeins because I have a full skein of this gray Mr. Mason. Um, sorry, it's hard to hold him and show you. So this is the gray, which is a really pretty gray. It's not terribly tonal, but it kind of, uh, it's got some depth into it. It's pretty. But yeah, so that is my Mr. Mason scarf. It's super squishy. I think it's done on, is it size four? Oh, size three. These are where my threes went. I was looking for them today. Uh, yeah, so that is all I have to show you. If you don't want to hear about what's going on in our lives right now, then you are more than welcome to press pause and go find something else to watch. I appreciate you staying through all of that talk about knitting. Um, 
we'll talk about what's going on in our lives right now and then I will let you guys go. So, what do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them about your chickens? Do you have chickens? Out there? Are they in the yard? Do you like to catch the chickens? Yeah. So Thatcher is a pro at catching our chickens. Um, huh, do you like to catch them? Chicken. You brought a chicken in the bedroom? Chicken. Chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Mama hold it. No, Mama's not going to hold her. Mama's holding baby. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Can you go take chicken outside? Outside. Outside, okay. Thank you, bud. Bye. Yeah. He, there's one chicken in particular that he catches all the time. I don't know if it's just a slow chicken or if it's also the biggest one. So I don't know if it's easier for him to catch. But he'll catch the same chicken over and over and over again. You'd think the chicken would wise up and go running when he sees Thatcher. But he doesn't, or she doesn't. All of our chickens are girls. They better be or we're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, we're going to turn it off in a little bit. Do you want to talk about your chickens? Chickens. Do you like to catch them? Yeah. Do you feed them? Feed them. Do you give them water? Water. Water. Do they live in a coop? Coop. Yeah. How many chickens do we have? Do we have one, two, three, four, five, six? Six chickens? Four. Yeah. We have six, huh? Um, so yeah, our chickens are getting really big. Baby or mama bear fell. Thatcher likes to chase them around. He is super, he'll play for hours outside with the chickens. So we either have to pen the dog, like crate the dog, um, when the chickens are out or keep the chickens. They have the whole run of the side yard. Um, and then we just lock them in their coop at night. But during the day, if our dog is loose in the backyard, the chickens are gated on the side yard, but they still have plenty of space to run. Um, but there's no grass or anything on the side yard. So as soon as we put the dog away, then we let the chickens out so they can come out and eat the grass and they eat the bugs in the garden. What are you doing, Becca? Um, we have to put the dog away when Thatcher and Mabel are outside because he he's super friendly, but he's he's a boxer. And so he's super energetic. And he just wants to play with the kids and he knocks them over. And then Thatcher gets upset, obviously. Um, so the dog is away if the kids are out, which means the chickens are out if the kids are out. So Thatcher likes to play with them. What else do we want to tell them? Huh? We are still sheltering in place. Um, California is doing a soft open. And our town is one of the 11 counties in the entire state that is not following the statewide soft open. So we are just now kind of opening, well, kind of soft opening. Thatcher's going to use the winder. Um, we're just delayed from everybody else in California. But, so we're still hanging out at home by ourselves. Um, Tim's still going to work. He's law enforcement, so he's considered essential. We recently, two days ago, had a local tragedy. Um, one of the sheriffs on Tim's, Tim didn't know him, but in Tim's, um, a coworker of Tim's, what they were responding to a 911 call and it was an ambush and he was murdered. And another officer is in, I think, critical condition in the hospital. And then an, I think it was an FBI or a police, another police from a different town was shot in the hand. Um, they caught the guy that did it. <clears throat> um, they're linking him or they're trying to link him to a murder up in Oakland last month. There was a, a federal agent protecting a federal building during one of the George Floyd protests. And... They think it was this guy's van pulled up and just shot the agent to death and then drove away. The van had no tags, no plates or anything. 
so they didn't have much to go on until the guy did this most recent ambush. And so there was a 911 call saying there was a suspicious van with bomb making materials and guns. And so the officers responded and it was chaos. And so we lost one of our sheriffs, um, or sheriff deputies, I think he was a sergeant. Um, so the whole town has just been reeling from that. It's kind of something that you don't really think could ever happen to your town or like your husband's employer. Um, and so the officer, or the sergeant that died, he has a wife and a young child and his wife is pregnant. And so it just, it really hit home that like that could be Tim. Tim works, um, well, Tim's not out on patrol, so it can't really happen to Tim, but that guy didn't think it could happen to him either. So he wasn't expecting to not come home that day. Um, so our town's a little shaken up over that and we're still getting a ton of new information about it. The FBI has taken over the case because I guess they, <coughs> the suspect and they don't know how many other people were involved, but they were planning something huge. So there was a lot of bomb making materials. Um, yeah, so they're not sure what all they were planning on. The, the suspect is in custody, but he is not in our county jail because they were afraid of retribution um, since he shot one of our sheriffs. So he's in the next counties over their facility. Um, but he will at least go down for murder for the sheriff that he murdered here. And then if they can tie him to the Oakland murder as well. And also, I guess, two years ago, his wife died. Um, and I think at the time they ruled it suicide. But now they're gonna, they might reopen that case. Um, hey, don't kick the tripod, please. They might reopen it to see if he had anything to do with that. And he was active duty Air Force. So the whole thing is just weird and it doesn't make sense. Um, so that's been the big thing that's been going on in our little town lately. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Hi, Mabel girl. I think she has a dirty diaper, so we're gonna go change that. Thatcher might go, are you gonna go chase a chicken? Thatcher is talking. Huh, are you talking? At oh, did you drop her? It's okay, we'll get her in a minute. Do you want to say hi to the iPad? Hi. Hi, iPad. Thatcher, get it. Thatcher, get it. Okay. Oh, you got it. Good job. He's very into, he says Thatcher before everything. So, like, if he's crying, he'll stop crying and be like, Thatcher, cry. Thatcher, sad. And then he'll continue going on. Or if Mabel's doing something, he's very, you know, he has to say Mabel's doing whatever she's doing. <coughs> Thatcher, do you run really fast? Do you run so fast? Like chicken. What? Oh, you, you chase the chicken. Do you catch her? And then what do you do when you catch her? Do you pet her? And do you say, hi chicken. Hi chicken. Hi chicken. Yeah. We have a pool, like a kiddie pool set up outside, and so we've been playing and splashing in that because it's been like 90 degrees. Is Mabel coughing? Ah. Yeah, she's almost crawling. Oh. Yeah! Crawl. Crawl, almost. Um. So Mabel is almost eight months. She'll be eight months this month. Um, she's not sitting up. She's very good at rolling over. She's almost crawling. She can rotate herself in circles. Um, and she kind of scoots forward, not on purpose. Um, I can't say too much about the case, but we I think we will have her for a while still. Okay, hold on, let mama get it out for you. Okay, do you want it over there, the basket? You just wanted it out of your way. Um, I think we will have her for a while still while mom works on getting her stuff together. Um, and then the judge will decide if mom is doing what she needs to be doing to get her back or if <clears throat> if mom's not really taking it seriously. I don't know because we're not to we're only given information that's pertinent to Mabel. So um, I don't know much about what's going on with mom 
but I know she's having troubles. So, um, so yeah, so we'll probably have Mabel for a little, a few more months at the minimum while mom tries to get her stuff together. Doctor, do you like Mabel? Yeah. Is that you? Oh, did she just roll over? Yeah, otherwise, how cute. What? Baby, right? Does she have a pacifier? You gonna put it in her mouth? Well, I think uh, it's on her docket top bug. Ah. Uh, yeah, on her docket top. Um, yeah. Anyways, before we completely uh, just lose it here, um, I think I will wrap this uh, up. Uh, on her docket top, you're right. Uh, Good job. Uh, is it clipped on? Should we unclip it? Uh, yeah, is it on her sleep sack? Can you say thank you? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so thank you for sticking around to the end of this podcast. I really appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, until I see you next time, I hope you guys are safe. I hope you are well. Um, yeah, and I hope you get a lot of quality nanny time in. So, <laughs> alright guys, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Chicken. 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 Hi, chicken. Thatcher, can you take chicken back outside? Outside. 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 Huh? Can you go put her down on the grass? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thatcher, say sausage. Sausage. Say sausage. 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 Sausage.